Hey everyone, what's going on? Eric here from Laughix. Got another video for you guys today. Today we're going to be showing you a quick little tip, or maybe not even a tip, maybe a very, very useful um, thing that you can actually do to revive your dead MacBook. I have a working one here because we're going to need that in just a little bit, but we have this MacBook. It's actually com completely dead. Um, sometimes some of the symptoms are um, when you plug it in, you're getting enough voltage there, but sometimes the amps really won't go up or they'll maybe go up very, very slightly if you check on the voltmeter then it'll just climb all the way back down. Um, and another good symptom is when you try to touch the, the, the trackpad, you'll feel that there's a little bit of force touch there. So it seems like it's on, but there's no keyboard, but there's no caps light, um, there's no image, and even when you play it on, this, on an external display, there's something else going on there. That's usually an indication that there could be a problem with uh, Bridge OS, or there could be a problem with the, the T2 chip, maybe got, um, could be a problem with the T2 chip, maybe there's corrupted firmware, who really knows? But we're going to be trying this. This would be a great option for you guys, uh, especially if you can. This would be a great option for you guys to try it, especially if there's no obvious like physical damage, uh, no liquid spills or anything else going on. Uh, speaking of actually liquid spills, we've actually seen um, this type of method. I've actually shown this one on a 16 inch, I believe we did a video for. And after we did a, a liquid spill repair, there was still a problem um, with the firmware and we had to restore it that way. So what you're going to be needing today, actually, if you have your charging cable, that'll be a great cable to use the, the original Apple one, because that's actually a Thunderbolt cable. Um, you're going to need that because a regular USB-C cable uh, most likely won't work for that. It may, you can try that, but we really recommend doing a Thunderbolt cable to get the most consistency out of this. And you do need a MacBook that has the latest OS if you can, or, or at least for the best chance would be to put on the latest OS. We have Ventura here and I guess let's get, let's get started. So um, what you need to do is let's actually bring up the screen cap. I'll show you that because that'll be a lot nicer, wouldn't it? So, okay. And in the working Mac, what you want to do is you want to go to the app store and there's something called, you can just put a configurator two or configurator. Cause that'll be the one that comes up. It's called Apple configurator, man. Look at that beautiful two star rating on it. I, I don't know why people rated that bad. Actually, I would give it a, I should probably just give it a five star because it actually has helped me before. But again, it's never fully consistent. But anyways, you want to download it. You can see I already have it here. Obviously, I would want to have it here because that's really important. And we open the, the devices and it just shows it here. Now, um, usually what I like to do is you like to have this open before uh, you connect your Mac. So let's keep this one open. Um, for configuration, you can kind of just leave it as a standard one. Um, if you already have this, try to update this one to the latest one. Or if it asks for an update, you should try to do that anyway, just for your best chances for uh, recovery of your Mac. Okay, now since we have this Apple configurator open, what we want to do is we want to use our uh, lightning cable. Nope, <laughs> not lightning cable, <laughs> Thunderbolt cable. So you want to use your Thunderbolt cable now. And what you want to do is um, there are something now, this is going to be different for each Mac. Depends on which one you have right now. I have, this is an older one. So I have the Intel uh, base Mac and um, there's something for which port you actually plug it in. It actually does matter. I'm trying to revive a, a, I believe a 1932 model. Now the master port on these ones is going to be the lower one down here. So the one I'm going to be using is going to be the bottom one, which is closer to the trackpad. That's going to be the master port for this one as well as the master port for um, connecting to our MacBook there. So I wanna make sure we plug it in there. Now I'm gonna be showing you this one because I know these are a little bit older. I'm also gonna be showing here a screenshot. So if you're not sure of your MacBook um, port, right? That's the master port there. Now these are for the Apple Silicon ones. I'm just gonna be scrolling just a little bit here and you guys can actually go ahead and check out to see which master port you have on the Apple Silicon ones. And for, uh, for iMacs, Mac minis, these are the ones with Apple Silicon chips in here. Now, this is also the ones with Intel, so if you have like iMac. And the MacBook ones are gonna be the same one that we're talking about here. So once you see your master port selection for your type of MacBook, you wanna plug it in that one accordingly. Um, it's also better if you can match the MacBook to match the MacBook itself, whichever one your patient MacBook is, because that does help the process as well. Okay, so and now, now what we're also gonna be doing is we're gonna be connecting our MacBook here too. So I have this one into our bottom port, just as for mine, so this is the master port. So we have it plugged in down here. And now I'm also gonna plug it in 
um, via, because this is our patient MacBook, right? And anyway, this one only has a few ports, so you can't really <laughs> mess them up. It only has two ports anyway, but the one closer to the trackpad is going to be the bottom there. So I'm going to plug this one in here. Now, I want to keep the Apple configurator open. You might get something here that says in the corner about Thunderbolt um, accessory not being available or not being able to be connected. This MacBook is at least recognizing that there's something plugged into the port. Um, that's at least a good thing there. If you have any corrosion or if you have any liquid damage, then this probably isn't going to work out for you because you have corrosion liquid damage. You need to fix that first, and then you may still need to do this in certain instances. So now we're going to be going over the overhead view. Okay, so on your patient Mac, what you want to do is there's a few buttons that you actually want to press here. So I'm going to hold the power button, right shift, left control, and left option here. And we're going to be doing that for like a few seconds and see if we're going to get this uh, to come up. Okay, and it popped up here. Um, let me show you guys, I guess. You should get this on your other Mac. Now it should be popped up here under DFU mode. And we can do everything configured here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch again back to this one. So we're here and in the DFU mode because this should pop up. If this doesn't pop up, you probably did it wrong. Or you should definitely try it again until you get this to pop up. If you try multiple, multiple, multiple times, um, then <laughs> there's obviously another problem. And it's probably not going to work or something's not registering. So what we want to do is we're in our DFU mode now. On, on this Mac. So what you want to do is you can double tap or just right click or whatever you're using for it. Um, now there's a few options you're going to see here. You're going to see a restore option, an update option, and um, also revive device option too. Um, restore is going to be the worst case for this one because restore is going to do what it says. It's going to actually wipe all the data. It's going to totally restore it completely so your data will be totally gone. Now, that's the worst case scenario. If you can't actually do that, you can go through that one. But for now, we're going to go ahead and see. We're going to hit revive device. And while it's going, it's just going to be going through the steps. And I'm going to put this on our other screen because I don't have to touch anything now. And it's doing its thing here. So let's just see because I'll put this to the side. And let's see if this will actually come up back on because it should do its little um, configuration and go from there. So I'm gonna leave this out here and we're gonna go ahead and see. I think this is the most important one to look at anyway, right? So, um, but it's gonna just do its thing. It's gonna take a little bit of time. We'll see if it comes on. And it, it could take some time. It could take a few minutes, like 10 minutes or so. So we'll wait, uh, I'll leave it on and see what happens when we come back. Okay, so I just was like away for like 10, 15 seconds <laughs> from when I last talked and we could see this is actually popping up here. And it should still be probably configuring anyway. And we'll let it continue. Okay, so we successfully provided the device. Looks to be good. Uh, we were able to keep the integrity of the data too. Now, again, if, if this didn't work, you could try this all over again and then try to go through the restore method. You click restore instead. It's going to ask you to remove the whole entire set of the data. So it looks to be good, and that's it. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on how to revive a dead MacBook with another MacBook, I guess. <laughs> That'd probably be the best way to put it. Best case scenario for that, um, if that actually does work. And again, if, uh, if this didn't work, try to go through the restore method. You go to the restore option instead. Now the thing is, it's gonna wipe all the data that's on there. So you could, if you're interested in doing that, if this didn't work, if you're really desperate, if you just want it to work, you don't care about your data, go through that way. Otherwise, you may have another problem anyway. I would say probably before you do the restore, um, if you really wanna care about the data, then maybe there's something else going on. It can be a liquid spill. There could be a problem with the logic board itself there. Um, we've also seen problems. Uh, if you get something like this, there could be a maybe a sh there could be an issue maybe with the touch bar giving an issue. Um, there could be other lots of other things. Uh, it's really always hard to say exactly why some of these happen, but a lot of we've even made a video uh, doing a liquid spill repair on a 16 inch, I believe it was, and we did a liquid spill repair for it. And then we still had to do uh, this method as well to do that. This happens a lot for these newer ones. There's just, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. There's security chips, there's touch bars, there's more than just hardware things going on here. There's, 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 
there's more than just hardware things going on in here. There's encryptions. There's extra security features on top of that. There's uh, OS for the touch bar itself there. Um, and especially if something gets tampered with, it could give a problem, right? So hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and learned something today. If you did, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. See you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.